Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bioshock, the Remastered Edition review. So, before we begin, just a friendly reminder, we will be starting the next walkthrough tomorrow. But before we do, I will be doing a behind-the-scenes bloopers for, uh... Uh, Call of Cthulhu, because there was a puzzle we were struggling with, and I got past the part with the help of YouTube, of course. And, um, I'm going to be doing kind of a behind-the-scenes. This previous Thursday, obviously, we did not do, uh, Call of Cthulhu. We did the new Dragon Age Fail Guard, uh, which, again, you can see me streaming a variety of things, including on Terror Thursday with uh, Call of Cthulhu, which will continue next Thursday. Um, but we will be starting our next walkthrough, which is Fable, Anniversary, the Good Hero ending. Um, as I'm dealing with a cat that's trying to misbehave. But basically, we'll be doing that as our next walkthrough. There is another poll that will be continuing until November 3rd. No, 17th. Um, not 13th, 17th. So make sure you get that vote in because this will be the last poll of the year. With um, December slowly approaching and coming upon us, I'm not going to do any polls. and I'm actually going to try to plan content out until March-ish. To give my uh, D&D editors some time to edit D&D videos. And that is also going to be around the time where we're going to be bringing back. Live streaming hopefully, knock on wood. Of the Dungeons and Dragons campaign. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into today's review. Friendly reminder that how I evaluate games is based on story, graphics, music characters, controls, and gameplay. So we will be talking about the game, obviously, since we did both not just the best ending, but also the alternative ending, as both Bioshock 1 and 2 have two different endings. The third one does not. So, with that said, there is going to be spoilers. If you are not wanting any spoilers of the game, Please stop watching this video at this point and play the game. It'll be a lot worth it to play the game instead of watching any reviews because reviews usually spoil things. So you have been warned. Do not pass go. Otherwise, if you don't care about spoilers or have already played the game but want to see what other people think, um, keep on going, I guess. So story. This is set in the 1960s. I can't remember which year, but... But, um, this is set in 1960s. However, the last year that Rapture was civilized, we'll just say, was in 1959, when, um, it was New Year's. So, something happened that specific year on New Year's that caused the chain reaction of events to occur. And it caused Jack, who is our main character, who we don't really get to see at all, or even hear his voice, really, um, discovers this disassociated society that's under the sea. Um, if you go through the tower, of course, that's in the middle of the ocean. So what are some pros and cons to the story? Obviously, the first one has to be choice. Um, and the fact that they give you so many choices of, okay, do I want to save the little sisters or do I not? Um, do I respect Cohen's wish to let the dancers dance in his apartment or not? Like, it is a lot of choices that 
impact the story in so many ways. Um, and you get to discover what happens through hollow tapes of sorts. Give me a moment. Sorry about that. <clears throat> As I was saying, um, you get to discover what happens via like holotapes of a sorts. I can't remember what they're really called at this point, but it's like an audio recorder and it almost is like a audio tape, um, which is kind of cool, but that's not what they're called. I'd like I said, I can't remember what they're exactly called, but um, they're kind of an evolved version of an audio tape. Um, and not only that, but, like, I really loved how the best ending, like, the treatment of the little sisters affects the ending, and, and especially the best ending, because that's, that's the ending I really love. Um, <laughs> the cons. Of course, we have to talk about some of the cons. So there are actually two antagonists. There's Andrew Ryan, and then there's Atlas turned into, surprisingly, Fontaine. They're the two powerhouses in Rapture. Now, we learned that Jack is supposedly the child of Andrew Ryan and Jolene, which is Andrew Ryan's girl, um, and stuff, but... Jolene didn't even think that all this was going to happen because Andrew Ryan actually had a girlfriend at the time. He wasn't married or anything, but he did have a girlfriend, so he cheated on said girlfriend. Shame on him. But he was made out to be this big bad wolf, which he was not, really. But when you face him, <laughs> He, he, you kind of find out he's not really that much of an antagonist. He doesn't even really, like, there's no boss fight with him. It's just a conversation that you have no choice or voice in the matter. However, uh, it's also where you learn about the tattoos that are on Jack's wrists, as we saw in the previous image, I believe. Or in at least one of the images, we'll see it. Um, but there's, like, two antagonists. And sadly, I wish there was, a, like, you know, a way to avoid doing what we did to Andrew Ryan. Especially since, you know, this is a reunion of son and father. The actual son and father. But... There's really no way, as long as Fontaine has the would you kindly phrase implemented, along with all these other codes that he knows to stop Andrew from using Jack against Fontaine. Um, and the, yeah, the late game realization of would you kindly effect, because as we saw in the previous slide, there is a note to Jack. And it is actually from Fontaine. Uh, say, would you kindly not open this until you're at these exact coordinates? And surprisingly, when he does open it, it causes the plane to crash. So the would you kindly, like, we couldn't even really see the note would you kindly until it shows it again um in the flashbacks of like all the times that Fontaine asked would you kindly would you kindly um and the other thing too is like it didn't really impact the character if we went against would you kindly um and the last con, because it, it is a con and a pro at the same time. The treatment of the little sisters affecting the ending. I hated the alternative ending. I'm just going to say it right now. I hated it. I felt like a monster. It was atrocious feeling altogether. I didn't want to play the alternative ending, but 
At the same time, I couldn't honestly review this without playing both sides of the stories. So, with that said, despite the pros and cons of that, I rated it a 9 out of 10 because it is a really good story. It, it gives kind of a morality, a, um, importance of choices mattering. So that is why I got a 9 out of 10. Graphics. So as you can see, the remastered edition is from the old one. It involves more depth. Um, there is a lot more color than the faded color we get in the um, original. And it, there's just so many changes. Uh, you kind of also see a little bit of the tattoo on the side of Jack's arm, which kind of blends in because it's a black tattoo of like chains on both of his arms and that's supposed to represent like splicing i believe or something like that so with that said what are some of the pros and cons the pros oh my god it rids this faded or smoky effect from the og because if you saw the og cover or um the OG gameplay, which I've done the OG games as well, aside from the uh, remastered editions, um, at least for the first two. And it is just so much... It, it's more in-depth and color. Like, you can tell they put in care to remastering this. Um, and it's visually easy on the eyes. However, there is also still problems with the graphics. Still problems with it. Um, the flashes are still intense. Like, oh my god, there's no warning. It's just this bright white uh, flash of light. I'm sorry. But if we're gonna have that, there needs to be a photo sensitivity warning of some sorts because... This cat fiend does not do well with bright light. Um, I actually have to close my eyes every time the bright white light of flashing occurs. So they're still intense. Um, and as much as I love some of it being gotten rid of for the smoky or faded feeling of it, I missed it in some sections. Like, it was kind of foggy in the, um... Oh, uh, the medical pavilion? Especially down below, like, that was so perfect to keep the fog in that area. Just because, like, it makes sense with the pipes being broken and it was freezing in there. Um... Or even in Fort Frolic with the... Poseidon area that has the Iceman. Um, like, I think some of it should have stayed, but that is just my personal preference. And the sea slugs. I didn't get the chance to play alternatively, but I was, like, Googling it, and I'm like, oh my god, these things are terrifying. Like, too terrifying for, for me to enjoy. Um, so... That was another con, because I was like, yeah, this makes me more uncomfortable than, okay, I made a bad choice. This does not look like a good choice. This is the feeling that I got every time for the sea slugs. Oh my god, get that out of my face. I don't like the look of that. Um, so with that said, um, the graphics got an 8 out of 10, because they still did a really good job with remastering the game. Now for music. So the person who was in charge of the music for both the original and remastered is Gary Scheiman. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and he, he is a genius, I think, in my opinion, with all the music, especially since the, the genre of music had to fit in with a specific time frame, which is the roaring... I think they were called, well, I don't remember what the 60s music was called, but, like, 
the 60s and 50s music that had to be put into it and the style of that music is just I loved it. So what are some of the pros and cons? Um, it definitely brought out the 50s and 60s vibes. Like, you could tell with how there is the gramophones, um, which was another form of communication, I believe, in, um, in games like, you know, Made of Scare and stuff, where, uh, or even in books like Dracula, I believe, or something. Those gramophones are just, like, an added effect. And when you launch the game, you actually see the gramophone with the music from Fort Frolic. Um, and it's also inspired other artists. Like, JT Music made a song that got, like, I want to say over a million views within the first week. Maybe five million. And it was the Make Me Pretty, which is inspired by Steinman. It's not his only uh Bioshock music video there is one before that one but that one was just I loved it I I listened to it non-stop for like weeks until it drove me crazy that that's how good the music is and I feel like there is more inspired music from that time era that just keeps the 50s and 60s alive um and it felt like the time era was different because you know um there is this other stuff that was being built under the sea away from all other societies without restriction um but it was also at the same time like similar to that time era because it wasn't like they progressed into the future um, like the year 3000 or something like that. They were still in the same time era, but at the same time wasn't. And I liked how he handled the delicacy of that um, balance. Because it's not like they had to stay to certain rules to an extent. Um, because this this underwater society broke away from all these other um, societal norms that we know today. Uh, and just, like, w what's a society without government, without any ruling except commerce, and just living under the sea, away from everything. Um, however, there are some cons. So, if you're a content creator like me, and you're just wanting to enjoy the game, there might be some copyrighted music in the game. Is it for certain copyrighted? It's something that has to be really looked into, has to be really studied and stuff. Because um, I think there is some copyrighted music in there, but I'm not 100% sure. But it's really beautiful if you could play it with the music. Also, it can be really intense. Not gonna lie, intense music, especially when I first started playing this for the first time. It scared the bejesus out of me for this game. I struggled with getting past the medical pavilion because I was kind of hyperventilating a little bit. And I had to quit the game for a while. But I eventually got back into it and I eventually finished the game. So with that said, with the music, it's a 9 out of 10 in my books just because... It does a really good job despite the minor cons to it. Because there wasn't a lot of cons to this music. Because it's like, I can't judge the 1950s and 1960s because that was before my time era. But I still like going back into this nostalgia almost of uh, living in another time era. But like it being brought through a video game. Because video games are another form of storytelling after all. So, next is characters. So, first characters we have that are kind of introduced to us and talked about is Andrew Ryan and Fontaine. Now, they're not the main character, but they are very important characters as they are the antagonists of the game and kind of introduced to us. They're in charge of two different groups of splicers, which is what um, we see a lot of and I did the dancing couple in Cohen's room because it just 
showed like a female and male splicer. However, there are more splicers in the game. It's just I couldn't find a really good picture that encased all of them. So um, there is a variety of splicers. So splicers are another character too um, that are in charge of Rapture trying to get Adam from the little sisters. But those little sisters are being guarded by big daddies that look like the one in the lower... Oh, the lower left corner. I meant lower right for the, the Cohen picture. But lower left... Big Daddy and Little Sister. There's also the rosy Big Daddies that are different and is kind of the main character for the next game. Um, there is Tenabom, which is the upper right corner. She is also another important figure because she was the one that figured out the slugs, the sea slugs specifically, and how Adam could change things. Uh, and she used her medical knowledge with the help of others to create the issue at hand, in a sense. And then there's Jack. Jack was altered and all this um, from the DNA of Andrew Ryan and Jolene, his mother. Um, the reason is Fontaine could do anything until Ryan made it where only certain members and himself by like blood recognition or something like that could even get into uh the controls of the office and um you know a lot of security stuff so Monty didn't have a way of getting past that except through uh you know Jack, the biological son of Andrew Ryan and Jolene. Now, there is nothing before his life uh, in Rapture to indicate he had anything going for him. Like, I don't know where he was traveling to, uh, what his life was like. None of it. So he is kind of an enigma. Um, and we don't get to really hear his voice except for like, ah, when he gets like hurt and stuff like that. Um, that's the only time we get to really hear his voice. So, what are some of the pros and cons? Each character adds purpose to the story. As we see with Tenenbaum, she's kind of the person helping Jack get some of the controlling effects undone. And then find the cure two-part cure to remove it completely. Um, Atlas is kind of guiding him to Andrew Ryan, and then it's revealed he is Fontaine, and then we have our new foe. Um, and Andrew Ryan, obviously, is the main focus, but then we also have the big sister, or the big daddies and little sisters, which uh, the little sisters then are just being protected um, or worse. Um, so they're kind of in charge of, like, a lot of things. And it, like, the characters emphasize that how much Adam, this one little thing that could change how they look, how they, um, stay healthy or whatever. Like, they emphasize, like, the influence it had on the society break away from other societal norms. And this uh, dependency on it and how much control it had over all of them and the choice of how Jack chooses to be affecting his demeanor as a character like the choice of him saving or not saving the little sisters affecting the ending obviously um, and choosing how he wants to get stronger too because you know He's attacking, um, the, oh, what's it called? Uh, um, like, if he attacks the dancers, Cohen comes after him, and then Cohen is no more. But if he doesn't go after the dancers, if he respects the dancers, he misses the upgrade and a bunch of other stuff. And Cohen gets to live furthermore, um... 
So, like, all those choices kind of, like, affect the kind of character you see in him, but mainly it's just the little sister surviving that determines if he's nice or not. Um, Jack. Oh, where do I start with Jack? Jack does not have a voice, aside from, ugh, and all that. Like, we don't really hear him have a voice. And it drives me bonkers because I want him to have a voice. I want him to say things like or be even given the choice to say things because it's like. Why no voice? Why not give a voice to Jack? So um, that was a big con of mine, aside from this Atlas Fontaine. Like when I first played it, I was like, oh, Atlas is such a great guy. Like he was wrong to like Jack and like lulled into the sense of he's a good guy and then we find out he's actually Fontaine. So the the big question is how can his voice sound the same? Like how does he do it? Because it doesn't make sense that his voice is almost exactly the same in both that list and Fontaine voice. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, the splicing. I really hate how, like, they just made, like, splicing, like, a bad thing. And just how grotesque some of the splicers look. Um, I felt like that could have been toned down a little bit in the remastered edition, but that's just my opinion. And the dialogue. I wish they had changed some of the dialogue. Because the wording is atrocious. I know that they were trying to make a point with the game at one point, but like with the Andrew Ryan conversation, I still cringe at it. Because it could have been a better choice of words. It could have been. Um, so with all of those cons and the pros, I sadly had to give this a 6 out of 10 just because I felt they could have done a lot better for the remastered altogether. <clears throat> Alrighty, so next is controls so i couldn't find the pc controls but it is available on pc obviously i did this via xbox there's also playstation and as you can see the controls are pretty simple for the most part um and they look very easy to use right so what are the pros and cons for some of these controls Oop. um they're easy to use uh, as you know, I kind of hinted, they are very easy to use, um, especially if you've had experience with, um, FPS games or, uh, third person shooters. Um, it's very easy to use for the most part. It's very simple in how they picked out the, uh, controls for the game, uh, in my opinion. And it also guides um, how to use the abilities and the controls of the game throughout, um, especially when something new is introduced. However, it's not always acknowledging. Um, I know there was a few times when I was doing the hacking um, game and I would try to move something and it was like, no, I didn't want to move that or I didn't want to swap that. So. It was very sensitive. Um, there was also lag, but I'm also going to save that part for um, gameplay to kind of elaborate more on that. And the controls are definitely sensitive or, like I said, not always acknowledging. Um, so because of that, I had to give this a 7 out of 10. If some of the stuff in the controls were better or where they could be adjusted I'd probably change it to maybe an 8 or 9 and finally gameplay uh 
if you want to see more of what it was like, I would recommend watching either the best ending or alternative ending walkthrough to get a better feel of what the game is like. Um, because it's just hard to do it this way, uh, you know, where you have to show it in one image. It's just really hard to do so. So with that said, um, what are some of the pros and cons? It felt like the OG, but better, obviously. Like, the gameplay was a lot better, was more fun, and it wasn't like, oh my god, I have to do this. So, um, it was really good. Uh, the replay for fun or doing the New Game Plus was actually kind of cool. I accidentally did a New Game Plus where I got to keep everything that I had, and then I was able to finish upgrading everything. So it was just really fun to do that, but it was also fun to just play, like, again, as, like, you know, normal gameplay, not plus gameplay. So, um, and it also includes the DLC content. I didn't play the DLC content because I just wanted to focus on the main story of the game. And the DLC isn't really important unless you're achievement hunting um, because then you will have to play the DLCs to get the rest of the achievements. The lag. Oh my god. There was sometimes lag, um, and you could see it in my alternative walkthrough. I don't know about the best ending, but definitely in the alternative walkthrough. Where I would lag for a moment, and then I'm like, oh, Jiminy Crickets, please don't lag on me. Kind of deal. Um, but thankfully sometimes it wouldn't always cause it to crash which is part of my other problem is like the first time playing this in 2020 2021 i played through it without any issue like i played it once no issues whatsoever but over the time and years there's just so more issues and i think after playing it once like there's just going to be more and more issues so um, there is a risk of crashing, which means you have to save a lot. I've actually had a save deleted because it crashed as I was saving it. Um, or while I was trying to save it, I should say, because I don't know if it was because of saving it or waiting to save it until the end. So it's going to be like a frequency of trying to save a lot. So with that said, what score did I give this? A 7 out of 10. If they were to fix some of those bugs and lags that seem to be happening with the game recently, I would give it a 8 or 9 on this part. So what was the final rating for this altogether? With a 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 7 out of 10, we have a 46 out of 60, which is 76.6 repeating percentile um so that is basically a c plus um so with that said uh this is where we're going to end it but again i hope you guys enjoyed this review don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will catch you guys in the next video